All right, there we go. I think I see me now. Can everybody see me okay? Everybody see me? Can you hear me? We can get my ugly mug off the off the screen here, or at least up into the corner. Get our charts going. Beautiful. All right. I always got to deal with a delay when I go through a, um, a streaming program like I use. So we're going to give everyone about two minutes to get here. Uh, but we've got a lot going on. We got a lot to talk about. Some pretty uh, interesting in the mark uh, things in the markets today. I'm going to show you uh, a setup that I liked today, and we're going to go from there. How'd everybody do today? Everybody hang in there, all right? See, I, I've been. I didn't look at the last about 20 minutes. So I'll tell you, I was looking for a setup late in the day. Never got it right. So you know. Um, as much as we like to be prognosticators in this business, um, we're just, we're not, right? Like we just, all we can do, we can have a thesis. Like I, if the, you know, I think this is what's gonna happen, but a trade is where a thesis meets a setup. So for me, I was really looking for, um, based on some of the, you know, I post some of the spot gamma stuff in the room uh, in our Discord channel uh, most mornings. I don't post a lot because it is paid content. And as a content creator myself, I don't wanna, um, you know, uh, just copy and paste that's unethical and not good. But uh, I do encourage you to check them out. And I don't have an affiliate relationship with them or anything, but just spotgamma.com, very, very good. But basically their whole thesis was that we were going to peg to 4,100 this week, right? And that doesn't necessarily mean, <coughs> excuse me, that, um, Okay. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that every second we're moving towards that, right? We move a few points away, go back down. But the the thesis the thesis that I was operating under was to to that we were going to peg to the forty one hundred level. Now maybe we go there in the next couple of hours, or we go there overnight. So I was looking in the last hour of the day for a short setup down to forty one hundred. I didn't get one, right? You can see here in the ES on the five minute. I was really looking for a break. Uh, and a hold below 41.25, and especially probably about 41.23, just really never got it, right? Um, and so that's okay, right? I had a thesis, I was gonna act on it if I saw a setup, but it just didn't, uh, it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't there, so, uh, and that's okay. I do wanna, again, we're gonna give everyone, ah, uh, we can go ahead, we're three minutes after, but, uh, well, first of all, welcome. We, we I know uh, Blue Sky is doing a fantastic job of packing our Discord channel. Um, and obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably got the link from Discord. Or if you're just a subscriber, make sure you check out the Blue, Di Blue Sky Discord. You can get to it uh, by going to bluesky.pro and uh, just signing up for a free account. You don't need to pay anything. It's a, it's a free resource. Highly encourage you to do that. Um, so, uh, but if you don't know me, my name is Matt. I'm the head of trading education at uh, my company, Teresius Trading. I have a very nice working relationship uh, with Josh and uh, the individuals over at Blue Sky. Um, really good guys. I really enjoy um, working with them. So uh, we do events like this from time to time. It's pre predominantly focused as a Q&A, right? So if at any point you have some questions, feel free to fire them off. Um, I do some, um, some more structured topics from time to time. Uh, but we really like to do this because this is how this is how we learn, right? We learn from um, talking to people that have walked the path um, before us. So, again, I am not for the purposes of this presentation because it's not a you know formal presentation. We don't have uh, slides or death by PowerPoint today. Uh, feel free to interrupt with questions at any time. Um, so I'm going to talk just briefly about a setup that I had in the NQ today. Um, one of my bread and butter type setups. And, and I, I've just about four months ago, uh, I started getting into these Renko charts and I don't use them exclusively, but I do use them in combination with my normal candlesticks. And so this is trading view. And actually I, I brought my, um, my Renko's all the way down to, uh, it's a five minute chart with one handle. So it gets, it gets kind of busy, right? There can be a lot going on, but it's, it, the NQ is very clean for this. For the ES, I have it, uh, um, well, it shouldn't be set at one. That should be set. At, anyway, we're not going to worry about the ES right now. But for the NQ, one of the, the and I'm work, working on form, I, like I trade this, I actively trade it, but I'm more formalizing into, into a, a, a rules-based structure pretty soon. And when I do that, I'll be happy to share that with you guys. But so basically what we're looking at here, let me get this so it's a little bigger so we can kind of see what's going on. Okay. So... I'm a momentum trend trader, right? I'm not a scalper. If, you, if you're out there scalping and you're successful with it, 
hey, more power to you, right? It's it's, And I, I'm not saying I don't play for smaller wins from time to time, especially in days like we've had um, over the past several uh, um uh, several sessions, but at the same time, I, I like to catch like 15, 20, 25 point moves in the ES. I like 50, 70, 100 point moves in the NQ. Now that means I trade less, right? I I make, I, I, well, actually today I just made three trades, right? Two were basically scratch. One was a small win, one was a small loser. And then the trade I'm going to show you was a, was a pretty big winner, right? So I don't count scratch trades as wins, right? Even small, tiny wins. So for me, I look at it that I was one of three today um, with about $900 in profit, okay? So it was a, a, a pretty good day. It wasn't a great day. It wasn't a wonderful day. Not even in my top, probably 50 of all time, but a nice day. A day you go home, you say, you know what? I did some things today good day uh, and we we sit down ready to, to trade for the next day which being ready to trade is, is our main topic that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes so within these rent coaches first of all let me answer the, is this my new office no this is actually the office I'm moving out of in the next two weeks um, I'm in the process of setting up a little uh, I, I in fact I was playing around with some of the um, stuff I dug out of storage when I had uh, when I worked for the last company that I had when I we were required to have like a formal studio set. I'm actually going back to that in my house. So um, for those that don't know, I I you know those of us that are traders and been doing this, you know, I've been doing this almost ten years full time now, right? Um, work from home is what we do. It's literally what we do. So while everyone else was discovering both the ups and the downs, mostly ups, right, of working at home, um, traders are like, yeah, okay, we we do this is what we do, right? Um, so I'd worked at home for a long time. And then once we kind of came out of the pandemic, I was getting really restless at home. Spent, you know, I love my, I love my house, um, I, you know, um, but at the same time spending literally almost, other than maybe a lunch break or go to get groceries or something day after day in the house, I needed to get away. So a year ago, I rented this office and actually I was in the process of putting together some more um, content that just, I needed a little bigger space, right? I've done that. I spent my year here. I'm heading back. Um, and, and so I just, I needed to get out. But no, I'm I'm in probably, I don't know about next week, but definitely the week after that, you guys will see me in my, my studio at home. I got a nice little like fake brick background and all that kind of stuff. Uh, um, so yeah, but uh, uh, but yeah, that so it's not the new office, um, but this is kind of the lighting and the sound setup. Hopefully I'm sounding really good today. I got one of these real nice sure mics that I've been using for a couple of years. Um, I usually I'm back there on my trading computer, right? Which is right behind me. Um, but no, so, so uh, I appreciate the question. Thanks for uh, keeping up with uh, with me and uh, in the events here. But uh, yeah, you'll see that uh, in the next couple of weeks. So with this particular setup, guys, so I always put, this is a trick because futures obviously trade almost 24 hours a day, right? Uh, and Renko charts are price-based and not time-based. So I always like to put a little uh, vertical line in here at the cash open, at the New York open, 9.30 Eastern, right? Because um, 99% of my futures trading has been within those hours over the course of the last four or four and a half years, right? Um, so I always slap, so what happened when, when the market's open today, right? Boom, within the first five, six, seven minutes, we, we, uh, we went down a good, uh, a good 40 points, right? There was some, and this is where I really like to look at book map, and I don't have that on the, on the Mac that I have set up here. Um, but it really helps me see where, where this is the liquidity on the board, right? It's pretty consistently liquidity sliding up under price, price coming down to take it out, right? Um, so that's a, that's a strong trend. It, now, it, it really didn't last that long, right, before it reser reversed itself. And I think as traders, as inexperienced traders, we always want to catch the bottom, right? So if we're heading down and the thesis is we're going to move back up, which was my thesis after the first few minutes, right? Because um, volatility just wasn't really backing up a lot of the things that we that we were seeing, right? And um, you know, so so we 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 always want to catch the bottom, right? If the bottom is thirteen thousand one hundred, we want to be buying at thirteen thousand hundred and one, right? And that's just not realistic, right? If there's going to be a hundred point move, an inexperienced trader thinks they can cap, they can catch ninety five points of it, whereas an experienced trader is going to be like, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and take this fifty points in the middle and let you let you all fight over the rest of it, right? So that's sort of the mentality that I have. And so with these Renko charts, they make it a lot easier to see um, when trend is inconclusive and when trend is exhausted and when trend flat out reverses. And the breaking of newer highs uh, on this chart is something that that uh, you'll see me illustrate. Because again, what is a downtrend? A downtrend by definition is nothing more than a series of lower lows and lower highs. So when we get a new high, the inexperienced traders are boom, just going to jump in there, right? I want to see a new high, and then I want to see that. The, the, I want to see it rejected, 
right? And then I want to see a push and a recapture of that high. Same thing for lows, right? I'm not the one who's, uh, you know, thir- like say 13,000 in the NQ because it's a nice round number, right? I'm not the one who's buying the first crack of 13,000, right? I want to see from 13,000, I want to see us move down to let's say t- uh, 12,975, retest that 13,000 and then reject. It's something I work with on my clients all the time, break, retest and go, right? It's not the, the simplest because um, usually, you know, you know, we don't retest to the to the tick, right? Uh, but confirmation of trades. When I see these things and I see a lot of things lining up, that's when I get into a trade. And so this was the one I had earlier um, this morning, okay? Um, so for, again, for the time of this, it's going to make it a little easier to look over here on the candlestick chart. So again, we saw a downtrend. Where is my marker? There's my marker. So again, we see this. Why can I not draw on these things? Okay. This is not... Can I pull these tools? And now the pull tools won't come. Okay. Um, Hold on. Sorry, guys. Just a tiny, tiny. uh... Oh, okay. Now I can draw. Perfect. Well, that's what I was hoping for. So let me just manually expand this. It won't let me draw on this when it's maximized. That's why you always learn new tools, right, guys? Okay. Let's bring this menu bar back over here. Get that out of the way. No, I want to expand. All right, beautiful. So as we can see here, we bottomed out here. And this I really like, guys, right? This is going to have me a first alert that the that the short-term trend is at least neutral. Okay, I'm not ready to call this bullish just because we move up a little bit, right? But at least, the tra- again, so we, we push up. We retest this low. Yes, we technically broke it. But now we have this area. And this is a strong candlestick pattern, right? This is why I use the two charts together. Um, my clients will tell you this is something I call a multi-wick rejection. Okay, when we have at least... There's not a set number on it, but two out of three, three out of five, six out of nine, but the majority of recent candlesticks break below a certain area and then rebound. Because again, what's actually physically within the markets going on here, right? And we'll call this 12,960. Is that when when 12,960, so in this case, we have one, two, three, four of five candlesticks, right? Where the price went below 1260, you're very, very close. And every single time what happens, buyer stepped in, buyer said, you know what? Yeah, uh, I'll take some at that price right there. Okay, so this is a very strong indicator for me. If if you're a disciple of Steve Neeson, one of the uh, OGs of candlesticks like I am, one of his, what he talks about is the biggest mistakes that newer traders use with candlesticks is they don't pay enough attention to the the wicks, the shadows, the whatever you want to call it, right? the, these are very important. So this in combination showed me, at least for now, the downtrend is exhausted. Now that doesn't mean that what eventually happened happens every time, right? Sometimes we just pitter around in here uh, and then, you know, test lows or whatever the case may be. So in this case, though, we rallied, okay? Now I'm not saying there's not setups to be had in here, right? I'm not saying you know, there's not traders making good money in here. I'm not even saying like chastising anybody who made good money in there. I'm just saying for me, I need to see the the uptrend get tested. And that's exactly what we saw, right? So let's go back to the to the Renko charts here. Okay. So we came up here and as soon as we make this new Renko high, which may not be the same as this high over here, right? Um, in fact, you can see we pushed up a little bit above, but then we retraced, okay? Actually, at this point, I thought my thesis was dead. Right at this point, because I set a buy just about five points ahead of this one. I think it was about 13, uh, 47 or 48. Right. So we have this situation where I, I OK, lower high, lower low. For me, I was thinking that, that, that we were going to do this. Right. And so my idea was going to be in the dust at that point. But we did rally back up. OK, now if we had made another lower low down here, the trade's off. OK, a third, uh, you know, a third lower low. Uh, it's, that's a downtrend, right? And I'm not going to try and fight with that. But in this case, we, we rallied right up. And again, let me get my, you can see where we went from here, right? And again, I'd love to sit here and tell you I caught 100 points on this move. No, it was, I think it was an average of, uh, depending on places I sold, an average of about 45 points, right? That's a very, but you know what? That's a nice day. That's a, that's a day when you're properly position sized that can, that can make a week, right? But I am not trading full position sizes right now because the, I'm going to lead that into my next, uh, in, into sort of the topic of the day. And uh, 
Uh, a lot of you have heard some version of this over the past few weeks. <coughs> it's another reason I don't like this office. It's right outside a little state road here, and anytime um, one of these guys on a crotch rocket wants to squeal through here, it uh, it it. Yeah, I don't know if you heard that, but regardless, um, the the main topic we're going to talk about today is being ready to trade. Right? When we first get into trading, we all have the same mentality, right? Um, we ignore the trading psychology aspect of things, right? You just give me the setup. I just need a setup, right? Can't tell you how many clients I've had over the years where I'm, I'm talking through something and I'd be like, yeah, but I, you're, I want the setup. Just give me, give me one of your setups and I'm, and I'm good. I'll be a millionaire in a month, right? And, but those of us that have experienced a little bit and gotten kicked in the mouth a little bit uh, by the markets, which I think is the best thing to happen to a new trader. Don't get me wrong. I don't want anyone to go insolvent, right? I don't want anyone to even lose 10% of their account. But I, I think the best thing in the world for a new trader coming in is to get is to get uh, kicked in the mouth, right? And, and so if you come in not respecting the markets, you should never fear the markets, but you should always respect them, right? And if you don't, the markets will put you in your place. And so this year has been, um, it, it's not been a bad year by any stretch of the imagination, personally, professionally, whatever the case may be, but it's been weird. It's, we've had a couple of things, uh, you know, and, and I, I've talked a little bit about it and I'll give you kind of the Reader's Digest version, but it's been a very weird and interesting year for me to the point where we're sitting here in the first full week of April. Since the year started, calendar year 2023, I've only had one single week that, that has been quote unquote normal, where I come to work, uh, you know, do mine. I, it's not nine to five, obviously. Usually my office hours are about seven to four. But where I do, and, and early on Fridays, I try to go home at lunch on Fridays. But um, where I've been able to do that for the course of a week, I've only been able to do that one week. Whereas it would be almost out of left field if I did, you know, if, if I went more than five or six weeks without a, you know, or I could go five or six weeks in a row without some kind of interruption. And so I've had to really reassess my mental game this year, right? Because there's been times I've sat at this desk behind me and I've begun to trade. The problem is I'm not ready to trade. I'm not mentally there, right? Maybe something happened that I rushed in the door 10 minutes before the, the markets open. I didn't have time to sit and do my prep, right? Or I just have other things on my mind, right? So just, uh, you know, again, this, thankfully it's been, it's ended up with nothing overly serious, but, um, you know, my girlfriend fell down at her house and broke her wrist. Um, and she cares for her dad full time, right? Cause her dad has, um, uh, nerve issues in his legs has has for a long time. So she's basically a f works full time job and is kind of a full time caretaker, right? So she calls me literally that Monday that uh, um, uh, you know the second the the federal holiday she had, she had broken a wrist. Okay, thankfully pretty clean break. Everything was eventually fine. But this is three weeks of I moved her in with me for a couple of weeks, right? And then we had to make sure her dad was taken care of and I could take care of her. Then I had to drive her to surgery. Now she's got all this other. It was it was a couple of weeks before she could go back home. Thankfully everything's fine. She gets home on uh, literally the day she gets home, her dad has a stroke, right? So now we're doing hospitals. We're doing all this stuff again. Um, <clears throat> finally got that together for a week. My dad had a, had a heart issue, right? Had an AFib situation, right? Uh, so dealing with hospitals and doctors and all that stuff. Um, while my mom is part-time going back to work to help, uh, she's an uh, education administrator. She retired many years. Well, she's retired a couple times over the years, but, um, you know, she subs in for administrators sometimes. Well, one took maternity leave. They needed somebody. So she's, again, all this is going on. Uh, then my, actually two weeks ago that my dad got COVID. So a whole different situation, right? So I have had to, and I, and I think long-term for my trading, this has been a net positive, right? Now I'm still doing okay. Am I making day-to-day, week-to-week, the money I'm accustomed to making over the last few years? No, but I'm still doing all right, right? The, like bills aren't gonna go unpaid. But at the same time, um, it has been, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a very optimistic silver lining kind of guy where I've been able to sit down and I've had to reassess. I've had to go through a mental checklist again. Okay, Matt, are you ready today? Okay, are you ready for to take a trade five minutes after the market opens and it go heavy against you? Okay, are you able to um, let you know let your winners run a little bit, right? Because you you know you you're, you're stressed and maybe you want to book some profits. Are you able to trade the way that you know you are capable of trading, making smart decisions and going from there, right? And this is something that we all have to do. Um, I, this isn't the point, you know, I'm not going to get heavy into this guys, but I'm, I, I do, I don't do it as much as I'd like anymore because again, this is one of the reasons I'm heading back home to just, um, uh, but I, I do, um, secular based meditation, right? I try to do about 10, 15 minutes a day. Uh, I'm very rarely able to do more than that. But again, just the very process of closing your eyes, taking a deep breath and guys, you don't need to follow any set system or anything like that. It, just do a minute, right? Uh, 
10 minutes before the market's open, close your eyes, try to get as much silence as you can, concentrate on your breath, deep breaths for, you know, five, six, seven breaths, and then open your eyes again, right? And, and go from there. Um, you know, it's very important that you sit down and, and I've worked with, listen, I'm, I'm well, obviously I'm in a serious relationship, but I'm not married, don't have kids. So time has never been a thing, right? That, that has really kept me from my training. Other things have certainly, right? But the, the, you know, and so when I work with clients who have full-time jobs or have, you know, families at home, this is always something I have to consider. And I've gotten a really good, you know, uh, sort of, um, oh, we'll call it a, uh, we'll call it, I've gotten a GED in time management over, <laughs> over the course of the last, uh, uh, last few months, right? So again, this is something that in the more, it's okay, guys, if, if you sit down and you're stressed, man, maybe you, you know, you and your significant other broke up last night, or maybe you've got a, a kid that's, that's dealing with some stuff, or you've got any of this stuff that we all have to deal with. It's okay if you're not ready to trade in the morning to not trade. Okay. Now you don't want to do, obviously if, you know, if, if your mental health is so poor that four out of five days, most days you can't, or weeks you can't trade, that's a separate issue, right? If you think you're having a legitimate mental health issue, please, please seek somebody who is a professional, right? I, I, I'm only half qualified to talk about some of this stuff when it comes to trading, right? So uh, again, I've, I've had, I've talked with some people over the years, they, they tell me some of the stuff they're going through and I'll just like, Hey man, I, this isn't my alley, right? Please, please go talk to somebody who, who can help you, right? Um, and so it's, it's something that we have to check ourselves on on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So any questions on that? Or anybody want to share anything that uh, uh, maybe they've dealt with? Again, we're not getting super personal or anything like that, guys, but a, a situation where it's, Hey, I've uh, you know I've dealt with this, and and here's how I dealt with it, or et cetera, et cetera. So, and then we will uh, actually, guys, this is a good place to kind of seg into our regular Q and A, right? So, any trading related questions, whether the markets today or some other things you want to talk about, this is the time to fire them off. Uh, in about twenty to twenty five minutes, we are going to um, do our uh, drawing, and so once uh, the, the link for that will appear in the chat here. Uh, in the next 15, 20 minutes. So when you see it, make sure you go sign up. In the meantime, and then guys, I know you're, based on what I was watching, you're about 30 seconds behind me. So uh, I will wait for some of the questions to appear. Otherwise, I can we can just get a little more into the... Uh... <laughs> you broke it. Well, that, that's, like, that's a whole different issue. No, I, I listen. You know, we don't know anybody, right? Like across. So I always make sure, like, to say that she was at her house and she fell. Right? It was not. I nobody, nobody was anywhere near her. So, um, but yeah, no, she's okay now. She got a gnarly scar though. She likes it. So, okay. So, oh, Ninza, man, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. So, um, just fight like hell, man. That's it, right? That's I and 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 f cancer. Seriously. Uh, I've had several members of my extended family that have that have dealt with that. So you you got this. Just trading might be a great thing to focus on, right? I mean, don't don't overdo yourself, right? But um, that's something you know when you're sitting sitting down and you're in in you know in a hospital or doing your you know you can have a tablet and look at charts and stuff like that. So um, yeah, fight like hell, man. We're with you. Traders of the world unite. <clears throat> Okay, so um, how do you try? Uh, oh, I'm going to ask her the counter trend question in a moment. Uh, do I always use Rankos? I, I told you I really just discovered them about four months ago. Uh, you know, probably actually it was it was right before Christmas when I when I kind of stumbled into it. Um, and I've played around with it. I, I don't find them as useful in the ES as I do the NQ. And I used to I used to have um, I, I tried with you know with uh, the 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 um, the one brick, uh, you know, one handle bricks, two handle bricks, three, the one just seems to work the best. Um, now, again, this is, a, it's a smaller monitor. I've got this on that I'm projecting to you guys. Obviously you see, I got the, you know, big ass ones back there and, and they're 4k. So I can get a lot more on a screen. Right. Um, but it, 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 again, it can help you see where the trend, um, is exhausted. Right. And so you see this down here where the, the, or wait, it was down here, where the trend is beginning to, at least according to the Rankos, may be uh, exhausted, right? And then you come down here and you see this multi-wick rejection 
Boy, you know, I, and I almost took it. I, again, I didn't just because of the markets kind of being, you know, uh, being top or, you know, being a little heavy in general recently. Uh, but, you know, one you can one setup that I've, I've taught in the past, guys, I don't use it as much anymore. Right. But one setup that I have used and taught in the past when it comes to candlesticks is when you see a, a cluster like this. Right. When you see a multi-wick rejection, how did that get? Um, you can enter on a break of the of the high of this, right? So we get a multi-wick rejection down here, and these are reversal patterns, so not necessarily a a, a continuation pattern, right? Uh, and and enter on a break with a stop uh, below the low here right and, and again that's I was looking at that I just didn't the risk risk reward wasn't there for me and again I was I was kind of I wanted to see a little more of a rebound before I looked at anything long related right I just it, this one and especially you know this is I, I do like this squeeze indicator guys this TTM squeeze I don't use it necessarily for idea generation I use it as one of my CRC's confirmation or cancellation right and so this was was still squeezing short but it was starting to loosen up. So in this situation, this doesn't tell me long or short, right? Okay, so um, counter trend, what was the, the question there? Um, how do you deal with trading train the, uh, trade the counter trend? Well, I'm really just looking for short-term trends, right? I'm not really a, a, um, uh, a contrarian in a lot of situations, right? So obviously, um, like this trade I was just showing you here, this was a trend trade, right? The trend at that point was up. Um, and, and so I, trend is a difficult topic to discuss because it, it, it's, you know, you can have something on a screaming uptrend in a five minute and a screaming downtrend on a daily, right? So I don't tend to, to trade counter trend, right? Like again, down here, I'm not looking like, oh my God, I got to get long here, right? Or, or trying to pick that exact bottom. I've just gotten burned too many times on that over the years, right? So for me, I'm really looking for a trend and then a continuation of that trend, right? Now I will tell you, this was not a big enough rebound for me to consider a short, right? But if this had moved a little higher, I potentially, again, I, I can't say I would have because I don't have the, the, a lot of the market internals, uh, you know, but it, let's say this had moved up here and let's say volatility was staying, staying flat, right? Wasn't moving up, wasn't moving down. And then we started to turn down and volatility picked up. That probably tells me we're breaking the, uh, um, the lows here and probably gain some momentum to the downside at that point, right? Okay. All right. Do you trade uh, VXM futures? No, I, I do not, Phoenix. I'm I, guys. Ninety five percent of my futures trading. Um, has been ESNQ, GC, or CL, right? Gold and oil in addition to the indexes. A little RTY. I've done the YM a couple of times, but really four in, two indexes isn't enough, right? I, I, and I don't, you know, I, it's easy to get seduced by, by the Russell, right? The small caps, the IWM uh, and, the, and the RTY. And it's just, eh, I, I just haven't, I, I haven't had as much luck with those. Um, and as much, I don't seem as zoned into those as I am uh, everything else. Uh, I've always, I, I'm going to add a grain this year, right? Um, oh, what was the, I don't remember, probably wheat, uh, wheat or corn or something. I got nothing but, you know, corn in, around my town. So I guess, uh, I guess I should start talking to some traders. My community asked you about the best rules in your company. Um, if you're referring to Blue Sky, all their rules for evals and stuff like that are on the website. I, I am not a Blue, Blue Sky employee. Um, I just, uh, I'm just a contractor, do a little work for them. But I, I am not, which allows me to, again, I can say things and, um, and be a little more real with you in certain trading stuff. And, you know, it's not, it's not that they, they can't. It's just a fact that, you know, I can speak honestly about a lot of different things because I'm, I'm, I'm not an employee of a... Uh, of a company, but I'm, I, again, I'm here and I'm doing this event for these guys. Cause I've talked to them. I like them. Um, you know, this is, it's, it, it, it's traders in this, in this company, right? You've seen, uh, Josh in there. I think you've seen Mike in there doing, doing his thing. Like the, tra this is a company of traders, right? This isn't like VC guys who are, you know, 
I mean, they're running a business. They want to make money, right? But this is not like, you know, they, they understand where, where you guys are coming from. And, I, and guys, you would be shocked how little that occurs in this business, right? I've worked for, I worked for the education arm of TradeStation for a couple of years. I worked for uh, two other independent um, uh, retail, like invest uh, training type stuff, right? I've spoken at conferences all over the country. And you'd be shocked how many people in the trading world that look to make money from traders, are not traders, right? So they're not, all they're approaching it from is the bottom line, right? Um, and and again, I don't, plenty of ways to make money, serve, you know, providing a service to traders, but when you're getting a company that is traders, right? Um, that's, yeah, that's something that uh, um, I, you know, I, I can speak on, but uh, yeah, as Josh says, we'll, uh, any Blue Sky specific questions, you can go ahead and fire them off in the Discord channel. <laughs> All right, guys, so you see the form on the page there. Um, it's the second blue sky comment from the bottom. Uh, that's where you fill out the information to enter the drawing, which we will do in about 15 minutes here. All right, let me catch up here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Trailing stops seem like a, mis mis uh, a mixed bag. Sometimes they prevent loss on sudden pullback. Other times they take me out before my profit target that I otherwise would have hit. Thoughts? I've got plenty. So here is in general, okay? Now, here is the hard and fast rules that I will use on almost every trade, all right? There are some, some small exceptions to this. We don't need to get into all those. But let's say, for example, uh, I wanna take a long in the NQ, right? For me, I need to have a minimum 1.5 to run reward to risk, right? Closer to two to one would be nice, but it, you know, uh, ideally, I want uh, at least at least, and this is on my first exit, right? I typically will go full position into a trade, full position out on my initial stop loss, but I will scale out on the upside, right? Because one of my biggest problems when I first, um, when I first began to to trade futures, especially, right, was it, I didn't let my winners run. Okay, so, and I've, won, you know, I, when I was running an alert service, an options alert service for TradeStation, I, you know, I could only do, I, I could do as many contracts in my personal account as I wanted to, but uh, to avoid clients getting over leveraged and over positioned, I can only do one contract at a time. So I couldn't scale out, right? With futures, I scale out on the upside. So for example, let's say 13,000. Again, we're near 13,000. It's a nice round number. Let's say uh, I, I have a long trade at 13,000. Now, of course, as I just told you, I would never take a long or short trade right at that point. But um, it's just you know easy from the uh, from the math point of view. And let's say my initial profit target is twenty five handles, so thirteen twenty five. I'm probably going to put my stop in at about fifteen handles, right? Any less than fifteen handles on the NQ, you're usually asking to get whipsawed around quite a bit, right? Because the NQ just you know the, the NQ is is on some days it's it's you know like a, a chihuahua on crack, right? It just, it's just like, you know, going all over the place. So, um, you know, I've tried experimenting with five, eight and 10 handle stop losses in the NQ. And I just find like what you talk about, getting stopped out way too early and then something turning around and running, right? So usually about 15 to 18 handles is, is kind of my sweet spot. So if I have, let's say 18 handles and I have then, um, uh, 25 handles to the upside on my initial profit target, I, I've got a really nice risk reward set in there, right? So for example, I would set, uh, let's let's just say 18 handles. So 13,000, so it, uh, 12,982 is my stop. And then I'm gonna hit my, uh, set my profit, initial profit target at 13,025, okay? Unle unless I get a new piece of information, I will not touch that trade until one of those two is hit. Okay. Again, maybe some unexpected news or unexpected data comes down or there's, you know, again, but 80, not, 80 to 90% of the time, that doesn't happen. Actually, probably 90 to 95% of the time. So once I've got those set in and I will put those into the market, right? In case power goes out or whatever, um, I will take half off at 25 at my initial profit target, right? Full off at my initial stop loss. Once, if the stop loss hit, trade's over. I'm on to the next one, right? But if my profit target is hit, the very first thing I do is slide that the stop for the rest of the position up to break even. Okay, so at that point, if my initial profit target is hit, 
uh, I'm risk out of the trade, right? Barring an act of God or, or something not getting through the exchange, I will not lose on that trade at that point. Then what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> depending on the position size, let's say I have, let's say I did 20 contracts, right? So 20, uh, and I typically trade the micros, right? A lot more flexibility uh, in and out. So let's say I had 20 MNQs. I took 10 off at 13.25. Probably another 15 points or so, I'll take the uh, I'll take an additional five, right? And every time that that the price action, whether it hits my profit target or not, moves up about five to seven points, I'm gonna trail that stop behind it manually. I don't just stick a trailing stop into the markets. I will just manually, you know how you can do on the dome, drag it up and drag it up and drag it up. Ideally, I'm dragging it up for a long time, right? I'm pretty quick to take that the that la half of the of the remaining possession and then five contracts, I'm gonna let them go. I'm just gonna, let's see, let's see how far we can go, right? Now, once I get to 50, 60, 70 points, I've probably taken them off, right? Um, everyone wants to hit the 200 point trade on the NQ. It's just in my experience, at some point, you know, don't, now, again, in this business, you gotta let your winners run, but you can't forget to pay yourself. And again, with me trading not at full position, because I, you know, again, I'm just now settling back into my routine. I wanna make sure I'm taking profits a little quicker. Right, I may be costing myself a few bucks here or there, but when you're a little, when you know you're a good trader, right, you have a good track record, and you're a little stressed, man, it's okay to just come home green at the end of the day, right? And I'm still doing that way more days than I'm not, right? Because red days, red, you think red days frustrate newer traders? You see so many of them, right? Uh, they really frustrate experienced traders, right? My my girlfriend knows just by how I'm texting her if I if I have, when I have a red day, right? Because I'm I'm down to like the one word responses. All right, so that was a 20-minute answer to a five-minute question, but that's all right. Uh, don't use FIB levels in tr uh, futures. Uh, why don't you use the test in pro drawdown? I don't know. I'm, I'm confused by that question. Please restate it. Mental trading checklist. Uh, I've gone over that in here, guys, before. I think it's in one of the past things. Um, let me let me double-check that, and if not, I'll go over it in the next event. But it's, it's not... I mean, this is not a trade-specific checklist, right? Like... Here's the four things for this particular setup, right? It's more of a, hey, am I ready to trade today? And, and it's not really a checklist. It's just a couple deep breaths and, you know, again, monitoring your stress level, right? When I'm upset or stressed, my heart rate spikes. So, like, that's why usually in the morning I, I have my watch on, right? And they, they can track that for me. Okay. How do you mentally respond to, the, to a loss? That's a very good question. And... I mean, I, I can tell you how I do to a loss at this stage in my career, but it's going to be a lot different than, you know, for some, but, but guys, you know, you want to, especially you guys in evals, right? What's the worst thing that can happen in a trade? It fails your account, right? Whether you hit the thousand dollar or, or you hit your, and what does that cost you? A 85 bucks to reset, right? Like that's, I, I know it sucks. Like it's 85 bucks. That's a lot of money, right? But at the same time that, you know, Guys, I lost 40 grand in my first six months of trading. That was swing trading, okay? You know, if you had told me, boy, you make this trade, and if, it, if, if you bottom out, instead of losing 1,000 bucks, you're going to lose 85, I'd be like, sign me up, right? So, you know, it's important. That now, it is important to treat your eval account like a real money account, right? Like, that's a little mental hack I've, I've talked to a few of you on before, right? Don't say, well, this is just fake money, and if I get it, great. If I don't, no, your attitude from day one should be, this is real money. And, and let's go from there, right? Um, but mentally responding to a loss is just, guys, it's, it, what's next, right? One of my all-time favorite television shows, The West Wing, okay? I'm a, I'm a huge kind of uh, Aaron Sorkin nerd uh, for some of the stuff that he does, right? And, and President Bartlett in that show, what's his catchphrase, right? What's next? Hey, what's next? What, what's, I mean, that was his, and so for me as a trader, I don't care if I win or lose on a trade, I'm out. Okay, what's next? Right. I'll stress. I honestly, I don't stress about losing trades in during the day. I may stress them a little bit at the, at the close or at lunchtime. Right. When I take my lunch break. But other than that, it's just I mean, the only time mental loss, mental or losses are tough mentally is when you don't have trust or confidence in your system. OK, well, how do you get trust and confidence in your system? Well, you trade it. Right, whether it's something you made up, something you, you got out of the box, something you learned from me, whatever the case may be. I don't care if a trading setup has made me 
10 million dollars that doesn't mean it's going to make you a dime right you've, you've got to be able to to you know respond to a particular trading setup you got to be able to spot it you got to be able to act on it um if you're having trouble with that and if losses really affect you guys go on the sim I, I can't emphasize that enough. Go on this. Don't don't try to fight through your eval on it, right? Because that's just you're, you know, you're just gonna end up, you know, resetting three or four times. And it's guys, you know what? I can't tell you how many times if, if I if if I could go back ten years to when I started trading, and instead of doing the, it the way I did it, just did it on an eval, right? I probably would have failed out twenty times, maybe more. <laughs> Right, so don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. If, if you're failing five, six, seven, eight times, reach out to me or Josh or somebody and, and you know, uh, let's, let's see if we can get you on the right path, okay? But failing out two or three times, that's, that's normal, right? I, you know, I, do, I don't have any stats on the funded traders, but I'd be willing to bet at least, at least a good chunk of them probably had a couple of failures before they passed. Again, I'm not a Blue Sky employee. I don't, I don't have any of that data, but that's, that's pro that would be my guess. So again, it's, it's, it's fine, right? Don't, don't, I mean, treat it, treat it right, but also don't overly stress it. It's not like it's coming directly out of your bank account, right? Just, just slowly but surely build up confidence and, and, you know, and guys, honestly, I'll tell you when you, if you're lucky enough to get a funded account, my, my advice to that would be cut your position size in half to start. And, and build back up from there, right? It's a whole, if you've never traded real money before, whether yours or somebody or whatever the case may be, it's, all, it's a different animal, okay? A lot of people aren't ready for it. That's okay. Okay. Um, it's the time that matters for losing an eval, I think. Robert, that is a good point, right? And time is valuable, right? But let me ask you this really what's the hurry don't get me wrong I, I don't think anybody should say you know what within two to three years i'm going to be funded no that's it's a lot of money in monthly fees right but what is the hurry right because if you get where you're trying to go okay and and what are what is the goal okay again the goal the the goal is not to get a funded account right well that's that's a step on the way to the goal you have to do that but the goal is to turn your is to do what experienced traders do which is turn the computer into an ATM, right? Execute day after day, build the account day after day and make, make your withdrawals, right? That's the goal, to be making consistent withdrawals from your account. Guys, that's no different than, than you know when I've traded my own account, right? I trade my account, usually at the end of the month, I scrape the profits off the top. And I, you know, I, I've basically, you know, I've been trading a funded account for many years, it just happens to be my funded account, right? So I, I, you know, that's the goal. Yeah, you got to pass your eval to get there, but the goal is to be making regular withdrawals to either support the life you have or to give yourself the life you want. Right? That's that's it. So don't don't overly stress. You know, if it takes you an extra week or two and one extra reset or one extra monthly payment, honestly, like I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. That's money, and and you know you don't want to pay it if you don't have to. But guys, if you get where you're trying to go, what's an extra eighty five? Right? You know, ideally, you can make that back pretty quick once you're once you're up and running. Do I trade any metals? I trade gold, so a little bit. But uh, and I actually checked this a couple weeks ago. So far, calendar twenty twenty three, no, eighty one percent of my trades are in the ES or the NQ. All right, guys, I'm gonna take a couple more questions and then we're going to. Um, Make sure you sign up, guys, because Josh is going to send me those names in a couple of minutes. Um, and, and so we'll spin for the, uh, for the free 50K giveaway. Okay. So I will take uh, two more questions. Five micros max. Imam, that's a, that's a good, actually, it's a great place to start, right? Great place to start. Um, to sign up for the giveaway, you click the link that's just a, a few. The Blue Sky Trading Company account just posted this link. It says, make sure you like, subscribe here, and then fill out this form to enter the raffle. And guys, please, if you do, if you it, honestly, you're watching this on YouTube, you know, I know this is the, you know, smash that like button or whatever those influencer idiots like to say. But guys, it does help spread, spread the message, right? You know, we're not, uh, I, me personally, 
nor Blue Sky. We're like, we're not, you know, some of these get rich quick idiots out here, right? We're trying to help a lot of retail traders. So, hey, share the link to this, guys. When you, you know, um, I don't care if you got two followers on social media or 20,000, post the, post the link to these and um, give it a like get, and subscribe to the channel, right? Yeah, that's a good point, Bobby. That's that's a great point. Every every I would everybody in this business pays their tuition. Sometimes it's money, sometimes it's time, most often it's a lot of both. Right? So, yeah, we we all we all have to go through it. The the reason a lot of traders fail is not because they can't do it, it's because they give up. Cuz it's hard. This is hard. Okay, now it can be done, right? It, 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 I, I'd be one, you know, of all the people that quit, probably half of them could be successful traders if they just stuck with it, right? They get frustrated and, and they quit. Well, in Exxon, you're seeing why traditional prop firms are really struggling, right? Not that they're they're eliminated. There's always going to be good ones out there, right? Um, but, you know, COVID and a lot changed with the... Yeah, dealing with lots of continuous failure is hard. It's very, very hard. Guys, you know, in, in this past year, as I've been running Tourist's Trading, you know, I started it in January of, of 22. Um, you know, it's, it's I, I, my first year, I operated the, the, the trading education side at a loss, right? Uh, business, starting a business is tough, right? And, and uh, you know, so experiencing some of, you know, sometimes you got to just throw a lot of, you know what, at the wall and see what sticks. I'm actually working on some mini courses I think you guys will enjoy. I, I don't, I'm not a big believer in, the, in like long courses and thinking you can learn to trade. Don't get me wrong, there's some great info out there, but like for somebody who's, who's not an experienced trader, thinks they can watch a five hour course and they're gonna be good. I just, I think you need interaction with the instructor, but I am working on some mini courses, some strategy based stuff that I think will, will be helpful for you guys and keep the cost down so they're um, a little more accessible to the funded trader crowd, so. Um, I'm working on that. Give me a couple weeks on that, but I, I will put some of my strategies on on film and and offer those to you guys. Hi, this is our this is the, uh, this will be the last question before we do the uh, giveaway here in a minute. Highs and our highs and lows are lows. How do you stay flat mentally? Well, if I wish there was a great secret to that, EY, and and really it's just experience, right? It's just knowing. Um, you know, knowing there's the sun's coming out tomorrow, right? Uh, I try to not get too too high with my trading, right? I, I try not to get too low, but but like I said, especially with other mental things weighing on you, like it has for me this year, that that's gonna be a thing, right? Um, you know, Bobby, that's a great. So Bobby says, I know a guy who didn't turn consistent profits and for six years. Now he does extremely well. I worked with a client. Now you know. To, when you move from company to company you know, in any business, let alone the education business, you know, you can't contact old clients, especially if they're still clients of the, of the last place. But I worked with a woman, one of the first places that I was at, that she was, um, uh, she was going on her fifth year of learning. But here's the thing. She never blew out her account. She started with a $60,000 account uh, about four and a half years later when, when I started working with her, she still had 51,000 in it. She only, nine, and she was mad about it, right? A $9,000 drawdown in five years. Or four and a half. I said, don't worry about it. Just you're 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 at least, you know, you're you're going to be in the game, right? You're still in the game. You'd blown out that fifty thousand in six months. You and I would be talking right now, right? So, yeah, no, really stuck with it. Oh, I love Mark Douglas. I am a Mark Douglas disciple. The Discipline Trader is a must read for every Discipline Trader trading in the zone. They're two similar books. I just think it's explained a little more in the Discipline Trader. You know, some of the stuff, the concepts are explained a little better, but you can't go wrong with either one. Mark Douglas, go search Mark Douglas Trading Psychology on YouTube. There's tons of his seminars. Uh, every now and then one of his like 16 hour seminar shows up there. Um, you know, and then it probably gets pulled down due to copyright. But if you ever see something like that, get a, get a YouTube downloader and download it. Um, 
I can't, I can't get enough of his stuff. I actually just found one of his seminars that I hadn't seen before. And it's probably the same stuff, right? Like most of the seminars are similar, but I hadn't seen this one before. I'm, I'm going to watch it, I think, uh, in the next week or two. <coughs> yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a bourbon man myself, right? But uh, I, 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 try to, I try to only drink to celebrate things rather than to, uh, um, you know, pick myself up. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, actually, uh, it, you know, this comment may get me in trouble and maybe Josh yells at me later, but in my experience, I've worked with a lot of people and women are better traders in uh, percentage wise than men. Um, I don't know the reason for that. Right. I could speculate, but I'm not going to make assumptions or anything like that. But uh, I just know we had a company where the, one of my companies a couple of years ago did a, did a, you know, kind of a general survey about that and it wasn't close. So yeah, no, I, it's, that's, that's it. But 90 something percent of traders out there are, are men. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we could spec, I'm not going to speculate. That just gets people in trouble, right? But it's, that's, that's just how it is, right? All right, guys. So, I, Josh just sent me these names here. <clears throat> so, we're going to go ahead and put these on the wheel O names, and then we are going to spin it. Um, I am going to start going back in a couple weeks, guys, to giving away um, a coaching session with me at these things, too. I'm just I'm in the process of, like I said, in the next couple weeks, I'm going to be moving out of this space. So it just gets. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, I, I, it, the schedule is just really tight right now. Uh, but yeah, so let's uh, let's go. So this is for a free fifty thousand dollar evaluation account. Uh, if you win, Josh will be in contact with you. Uh, shortly. Okay. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel O names. NASDAQ. Congratulations, sir. You're at almost every one of these things. So I'm glad you, I'm happy for you. All right, so like I said, Josh will be reaching out to you uh, momentarily. Yeah, congrats, man. Make it count. Um, if your name wasn't on there, guys, you didn't sign up for the thing. So I, I mentioned it a few times. Um, yeah, you had to sign the thing, but... Yeah, yeah, I... I Participation is 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 nice, right? Um, when you, and I see a lot of the same name guys, and and I'll tell you what, guys, this is that's how you win in this game, right? Keep showing up, keep learning, keep you know. I, I preach to the crowd, crowd uh, preach the choir at some of these things, right? Because most of you are here almost every time. That's awesome, seriously. I mean, don't get me wrong. I really hope you learn something from these. I, I hope there's something, that, multiple things you can take away from these events that I do. But at the bottom line is just keep keep learning, keep showing up, you know, and, and you know, like I, I always say, there's two steps to not to being successful in trading. Number one is don't blow up your account. Number two is keep learning and, and you'll get there. All right. All right, guys. Well, as always, watch the announcements tab for any events. Uh, as, again, as I get home and comfortable and my time expands a little bit. Um, I'd like to do a few different kinds of events. Maybe we'll do, uh, maybe hey, maybe we'll do some some like live market analysis or live trading at some point. Maybe we'll look at uh, um, doing some evening things. Just uh, you know, we'll we'll figure it out. But I, I appreciate you guys showing up. Um, again, get active in the Discord, guys. Ask questions, post thoughts, post charts. We really want to get that thing going, right? It, 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 you know. Um, you're always welcome to direct message me with any questions, but if it's trading related, I, it, it, you're, if you don't want to ask it in the room, that's okay, but I'd prefer that you did because probably somebody else is answering or is asking that question as well, right? Yeah, as always, make sure you thank Josh. Um, he, he puts these together on the blue sky end, so always, uh, always nice uh, for him to kind of uh, MC in the background of this. All right, guys, thank you very much. I will see you um, 
Well, tomorrow, actually, tomorrow is Good Friday. And the markets have some reduced hours. So make sure you know uh, what, what is and what isn't and don't get caught with something over the weekend, right?